The question of insurance is inevitably tied to the major items of expense in the solar plant. They are the plant operators and the maintenance staff, the stock of spare parts, the stocks of consumables such as oil and paint, the surveillance and the monitoring system, the insurance policies, land rents, other supplies and services, and taxes. Staff costs will depend on staff numbers and skills, and it's important to have at least one well-trained supervisor at record keeping and at a functional level. At the functional level, he or she will need to have electrical and mechanical skills to undertake repairs by themselves. A good supervisor could even manage repairs across several plants. Mechanical skills are very important if sun trackers are being used. When it comes to record keeping, he or she has to have the ability to create documents and records and to create logs of all incidents at the plants so that they can be used for preventive and corrective maintenance. An updated list of all spare parts is essential and sufficient parts must be available. Not having critical parts can stop the whole plant, resulting in serious production losses. A similar track is needed on the stock of consumables. A shortage of oil for sun trackers, for instance, may not stop the plant, but a lack of lubrication can lead to economic losses. Poor monitoring or surveillance can come at a very high cost, not only because of stolen elements, but also because of production losses and labour costs. A combination of remote surveillance and physical security is recommended. The monitoring system needs to detect incidents as they happen. The goal is to, de de to detect and resolve problems as soon as possible. Insurance normally doesn't cover production losses, so any coverage for these kinds of losses needs to be expressly defined in the policy. Any land rental agreements need to guarantee access and site use over the plant's whole lifetime. Urban sites are more expensive than rural sites, that has to be taken into account. And for rooftop installations, a check is needed to ensure that the roof will last 25 years and no other building will be installed close by that will possibly cast shadows. Utility services are not very important to the cost of a total cost of a solar plant. On taxes, checks need to be made with the government to ensure that the plant enjoys the benefit of all reductions granted to renewable energy facilities. There are two key points when considering insurance for a PV facility. First, the identification of all possible risks, together with all assets such as devices and equipment and all interests such as production losses where protection is needed. Second, the coverage offered in the insurance policy needs to be carefully considered. It should cover the construction phase, plant operation and public liability either with one insurance policy or across a series of policies. Normally plant construction and commissioning and plant operation need two separate insurance policies. During the construction and commissioning phases there are interim risks that need to be considered while for the operational phase, the operators can usually choose between a customised or a comprehensive insurance policy. In this slide, you can find a list of risks associated with a PV facility classified into two groups, risks that can be covered by insurance and risks that cannot. The main insurance risks are natural risks from rain damage to earthquakes, risks such as theft, vandalism or sabotage, here, investment in surveillance and security can help keep insurance premiums down. Risk of workers' personal injury are risk associated with the construction and commissioning of the plant, such as the risk of delays due to defective materials or machinery breakdowns. Risks of loss of production are not normally covered within compre comprehensive insurance policies, therefore they need to be expressly included in the policy. Non-insurable risks include political, social or financial risks that lead to losses, such as unforeseen tariff changes or technological risks, such as the choice of equipment that fails to match expectations. Risks from poor strategic decision-making are also not insurable. 
In choosing an insurance policy, the main goal must be to protect the interests of the owners and the interests of the financing company. The interest of these two entities is often similar, but it's not always, that's not always the case. The insurance policy should cover the owners and finance companies' assets, their incomes and their responsibilities associated with their solar plant. The insurance companies will look at two distinct issues. The risks associated with project execution, that includes each step from planning to commissioning, and the risks associated with plant operation. It's recommended to get comprehensive insurance that covers all possible risks up to plant operation. The main elements to cover are the foundations, installation of equipment in the solar plant, particularly the modules and inverters, all the buildings and fences, all civil and electrical works, and the installation of electrical protections throughout the plant. Coverage should be against all possible risk, including transportation from the manufacturer to the PV facility and their exposure to the elements during delivery. It should include the load and unload of materials, assembly and, very important, testing and commissioning. Insurance of maintenance is, a, is treated as part of plant operation. Comprehensive insurance will cover all direct, sudden and unforeseen damages that are not explicitly excluded from the insurance policy. Here we have a table on the coverage needed for all insurable risks prior to plant operation, and there are four types. Ordinary risks, natural risks, staging risks and optional risks. Ordinary risks includes fire or explosion from malfunction. The risk of injury to staff is an ordinary risk, as is the risk to, of theft. To minimise premiums against theft, it's good practice to store materials behind a fence with the most critical materials in a locked room. Natural risks are not as important prior to plant operation as they are during operation. Natural risks include losses to, due to snow, rain or frost, and any natural action that may cause a panel to break. There are two main types of risk during the construction and commissioning period, known as staging risks. The first is technical risks of losses where materials are badly managed, or perhaps there is damage during commissioning due to an unnoticed poor connection. The second kind of staging risk is human error due to inexperience or negligence, for example. Finally, there are optional risks. These are risks where you may want insurance cover, but actually getting coverage can be difficult, such as cover against design mistakes and risks where no insurance will provide cover, such as risks from strikes or perhaps civil protests. With comprehensive insurance on the whole, where risks are not ex specifically excluded from a policy, they're included in the policy. It's vital to analyse all risks that may occur before the plant goes into operation if a good comprehensive insurance policy up to plant operation is to be achieved. Reasonable steps to protect the site, materials and equipment will be expected as the surveillance system is unlikely to be in operation at this stage. It is also important that subcontractors and workers on the project follow safety guidelines or have their own insurance. In fact, all people and companies involved in the execution of the project must be covered by insurance, either the project insurance or their own policy. For plant protection, there's a choice between a comprehensive policy and a customised multi-risk policy. The elements to insure are almost the same as during plant execution. The foundations, the modules and equipment, the fences and construction, the civil and electrical works and the electrical protections. A customised insurance approach details in the policy what are considered recoverable incidents. In comprehensive policies, on the other hand, virtually all losses are considered recoverable unless explicitly stated as unrecoverable. This customised insurance approach starts with some guarantees of risk coverage for basic areas such as fire explosion and some natural phenomena such as lightning strikes. It's recommended that the coverage for natural phenomena includes risks from rain or wind damage and so on. Wind coverage is particularly important in plants with sun tractors as we said before. Other coverage should include risks from theft, electrical damage, possible breakdowns in equipment, 
and coverage against breakdown of inverters is particularly recommended. It is really important to include public liability in a customised insurance policy. Comprehensive insurance policies normally include everything seen in the last slide and exclude bad intentions on the part of the contractor as well as design mistakes and performance degradation of elements in the plant. Guarantees on performance is usually an issue for the component manufacturer. Normally solar module manufacturers guarantee and expect a 20% degradation in the modules in the first 25 years. Some guarantee a degradation of only 10% in the first 10 years as well. The only optional coverage you would usually seek to add to a comprehensive insurance policy would be coverage against production losses and labour downtime. Coverage against these kinds of losses is recommended, but you have to consider the price of including them and the risks of them occurring. Normally, a sun tracking system plant is more risky than one without sun trackers. Whether you opt for a customised or a comprehensive insurance policy, it's important to have public liability insurance, as we said before. Before signing on an insurance policy, check the requirements. Analyse all the risks and take account of the risk-reducing protection and vigilance measures that are in place, as well as the effects of the guarantees on the breakdown and maintenance contracts. One element affecting risks that should not be overlooked is the availability of spare parts on the market in the event of breakdown. Where services such as maintenance are outsourced, checks should be made on the validity, adequacy and effectiveness of their insurance cover. <laughs>